Summer sure feels like it is here in Florida, and uh, it's a great time to cool off with a nice fruity drink. And our resident mixologist, Dean Hurst, has just the thing for us. Welcome, Dean. How are you? Good, good. Glad to be here. Resident, how long has that been attached to my do you like name? That? I we do. Just I like that. it. Well, I like you know it. you're resident when before we get started in the interview, we're actually talking about our kids. We yes. were both up all night with, <laughs> with little ones last night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But she was so sweet, you know? Like I just said, she woke up like, what are you, look, what are you thinking about? She goes, ladybugs. Aww. I'm like, okay. See, that is sweet. But you yeah. know what? That works as a great segue, which again, since you're our resident mixologist, to sweet drinks. Yes. See what so, we did there, Dean? So um, we planned it. We just knocked it right in there. <laughs> um, we went picking blueberries. So Blue's Berry Farm out in Plant City. Every year I get yeah. a little postcard and to do a U-pick. So we walk through there and pick berries. And blueberries are great on their own, especially when they're sun ripened. But if you freeze them first, uh, more flavor comes out of the skin because the freezing process crystallizes the little water that's inside the skin. Okay. So when it, then it thaws out, the berries are kind of soft and they're easy to work with and muddle. I don't know if you want to try one. Now, absolutely I do. Let me ask you this, Dean. Yes. So I've tried this and I don't know if I'm doing this right or if this is not a smart thing. Taken frozen and putting them right into drinks, they kind of work as ice cubes a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, that's great is that, too. Is that where we're nope, going? That is great too. You can definitely do that. But here, you're trying to get more flavor out of it. Like blackberries, oh, blackberries, you always get more flavor out of when you freeze them first. It just kind of makes, it just breaks down the hard center that can be inside a blackberry, huh. you know? Right? So it just makes them more enjoyable. And I know uh, my daughter, Pearl, loves them that way, too. So um, we're going to make a blueberry mojito, oh. and we're going to make a blackberry whiskey sour. You know you're making this really tough on Carly, who's pregnant right now. <laughs> Mojitos are her I, drink, especially oh, yeah? with right now. <laughs> Sorry, Carly. <laughs> maybe, maybe Dean, since he's our resident mixologist, he'll make you one that you can have. How's that sound? <laughs> so we're going to, yeah, well, I can do that. We can make them without the alcohol, too. Exactly. And just the fresh berries. She would love that, I know. So we're going to put uh, fresh mint, blueberries, a little bit of fresh lime, and simple syrup, and then muddle that up. Not like, we're not trying to, you know, destroy the mint. We just want to get it, the, some of the mint <laughs> flavoring with the syrup and the juice, right? I like that. Don't destroy the Don't mint. Don't destroy it. Okay, there's that so one. So really, you're not doing anything different for the mojito other than just not adding the really. blueberries. Really, just adding out. the blueberries, just a little more color, a little more fun. And then we're using Siesta Key, which is from Jump Circle Distilling down in Sarasota. So a nice local I white say, rum. We love, we love the locals. Yep, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Just pour that over top. We'll give that a little stir and top it off with some soda water. You don't want to stir it up too much because you want the mint to stay on the bottom, you know, because oh. you don't want, well, you don't want, to be you want mint. the flavor, yeah, maybe the berry's fine or whatever, but you don't really want to get the mint in there. And you can shake a mojito, yeah. um, but then you don't have to muddle it because the shaking does the, is, breaks okay. up the mint and gets the flavor in. And I feel like muddle's kind part of, of the fun, though, with the mojito, though. Yes, the muddling's <laughs> kind of fun. So that's like a classic built mojito right there. Oh, right, look at looks that. looks beautiful. And then here, we're just going to muddle the berries uh, and inside was, the tin. And this was, again, what was this? This is going to be a whiskey sour. Whiskey sour. Yeah, with the blackberries. With blackberries. And we're going to use four roses because it's one of my favorite bourbons, and they're small batches, just delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of delicious, this, this is Right, nice great and bright and refreshing. This is so good. So, yeah, I'm a big fan, though, of taking all the blueberry beers you see these days and putting blueberries in them. I love that. I feel like oh, I sure. can't have a blueberry Kinda beer doubling down. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a little bit of fresh fruit too also hurts, or doesn't hurt that process. You know, when you put a little, like, a little bit of like orange peel or something in a fruit beer, it'll kind of brighten up the flavor. Oh, flavors. I'm with you there too. See, I thought you were gonna say that I can make market as healthy then since it has fruit <laughs> in it. Does that work Did, too, Dean? It could. Did I put, I think I put everything in there. <laughs> And you can always taste and tell, I mean, right away. You and can these, taste and tell. I always think it tastes good regardless. Well, you would know. You would know. You would, would know. know. You sure, because I forgot the simple syrup. It'd be way too acidic. If I forgot the booze, you would clearly know. Um, <laughs> Maybe we're making that one for Carly again. Sure. Oh, right. Right. I'll definitely make one before I go. So here we're double straightening out the berries because you don't want that stuff in your teeth. Right, when you're, when you're at a pool party and whatnot. And believe me, I've done enough of that on this show, Dean, mm. that we don't need to have more seeds in my teeth when I smile and look at uh, our wonderful viewers. <laughs> so they are thanking you as well. No one wants to see that. Excellent. Yes, yeah, I could probably put two ounces of whiskey in there to make that fill it up a little taller. Okay. It is morning time, right? Well, it, this is true. And my bosses usually are watching as well. So. <laughs> we'll drop a couple berries inside as a garnish. That's a lot more red than I thought it was going to be. Well, that's again the freezing process because again, it's breaking down the skins and all the flavor is, is around the skin. Like the berry on the inside, just like a grape, and I, I wish I had a knife here. Maybe I can do this without busting it. See, yeah. the inside's kind of white, right? Yeah. So all the flavor comes from the skin, just like a wine grape. So Pinot Noir grapes are red. Yes. And it takes the skin contact inside the juice to get the flavor of that, that Pinot Noir, right? 
I'm, you know what, Dean? You know, I just realized we have touched on kids, we have touched on <laughs> cocktails, we've touched on beer, and now we just touched on wine. Good job. Yep, Again, that is why you are a resident mixologist. Excellent. How about a little cheers job. to the summer? Cheers. Cheers to summer. Good stuff. Thank it's you so here. much. Yes, it is, it's right? So, Florida's motto summer is coming. <laughs>